So that being said, what I'd like to do now is just talk about the laws of rapport, the actual spiritual laws that govern communication between the spirit world and between us here on earth. Now, this material hasn't been presented very much at all on the earth. In fact, um, a lot of the material I'll be presenting today hasn't actually been presented on earth in the format that, that I, in, in, and the information hasn't been available. And the reason why this is, is because there is so much misinformation. And that's the problem with this whole, pro whole process. There is so much misinformation that many of us go along, and many of you may have gone along to a psychic or a medium, and felt like you didn't really get much out of it at all. Who's felt like that at times when they've gone? So, yeah, been half to three quarters of the audience. And then other times you go along to a psychic or medium and you come along, uh, come out feeling, wow, that was quite impressive. Um, you know, what happened there? How many of you have had that experience where you've gone along to one, all right, almost the same amount of people? So how does that work? How, how does that work that you can go along to many and not be very impressed at all, it doesn't seem like you're really getting much information, and then go along to others and, uh, and get some really important and information that's been really powerful for you? The other thing that often happens too is that we have this thing going on when, it, when we go to a psychic or medium where we feel almost glorifying of the psychic or medium because of the ability that they have. Right? This happens very often. And so then we become very sensitive to anything that's said and we start feeling that everything that's said must be true. How many of you have felt that going along to a psychic or medium? So, quite a few of you, right? So, so the question then becomes, well, is it all true? Well, of course, over time, after uh, we've gone and we come back and over the following months or years, uh, we see sometimes, well, that wasn't true. Or we see, oh, well, part of it was true, but another part of it wasn't true. So why is there this seeming inaccuracy? You know, if, if the person was talking to a spirit, surely it's just like a communication that we're having. And if, if that's the, the case, then I'm saying something to you, and, and uh, if, if, that, if that thing is repeated, surely that's, that's enough. That, that would be the truth of what that person is feeling. And, uh, and why, why would I then assume that that, that that communication is all the truth, for example? And why would I then assume that it's actually God's truth, for example? So there's lots of emotions that are involved in this process. Now, for that reason, mediums have a lot of power. And also, with all powerful gifts, a lot of responsibility. You see, there's a lot of responsibility in the sense that they can use their gift for good or they can use their gift for evil. And in fact, they can actually use their gift in a manner that they're not even aware they're using it, that it's actually harming people. And so it becomes very important for us to understand that the gift that we have is a gift that needs to be used wisely, just like any other gift that we would have. And that we can damage people with this gift or we can assist them with the gift. It all depends on, firstly, our motive and our knowledge and our understanding. And you can damage someone without even knowing it, can't you? But there's been many times in our own lives, haven't there, in the day-to-day -day interaction where we've said or done something that we didn't think would have such a powerful effect on somebody and yet they've gone away and acted upon it and felt damaged by it. And so the problem with the mediumship gift is that it can also be a conduit for spirits to actually damage people on earth. And that's another problem that uh, exists with it. So that all being said, it's very important to understand the gift. 